Good morning. I'm with a new guest here in Goldfinger Capital. He is VP of Exploration for Copper Giant, formerly Libero Copper. Good morning, Edwin. How are you? I'm doing just great. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to, to meet you. All right. Before we get into the project, the Porphyry project there in Colombia, I just want to ask you about your background, you know, as a geo and how you became VP of exploration for Copper Giant. So, well, I'm a Colombian geologist. I've got 15 years experience in the mining industry, covering the whole spectrum from grassroots discovery to mine development. I've been involved in the project since 2022. And, um, I have a master's degree and I'm, I'm a second year PhD student and matter of fact I'm doing my PhD here in Mokoa so it's a very special one deposit. Oh Mokoa so you're doing your PhD at this project? At this project yeah. Wow okay and it's it's a very interesting project it seems like uh there's a lot more puzzles to be solved here maybe some more you know discoveries to be made. Uh so you put out news release yesterday May 6th, hole 46. Tell us about the results of hole 46. Well, we just released uh, the results of hole 46. Hole 46 was uh, it was a strategic design to test the east continuity of the deposit, uh, covering an area that was modeled as a waste by the previous owner of the of the project. We intercept consistent copper and molybdenum gray from the top to the bottom of the hole. I was talking about, we are talking about a thousand meter holes. Uh, from the top to the bottom, the hole returned a thousand meters, grading 0.38 percent of copper equivalent, including 656 um, uh, at 0.52 percent of copper equivalent. And together with the hole 43, 44, and 45, we just cover an area uh, roughly of one by one kilometers. So looking at the section map in the news release, you can see that the bottom uh, half of the hole essentially went right underneath the pit shell as yeah. it's drawn. And there was one portion of the hole. I mean, these are porphyry intercepts. So we're talking about wide intervals. There's 413 meters grading half a percent copper equivalent, 0.36% copper, 0.03% moly there, over 413 meters. Um, how surprising was that for you in terms of seeing that this porphyry system extends much farther to the east in that depth? Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was, I'm very happy with the result because it's proving our own interpretation about the distribution and the, and the evolution of the system. We went down and lateral. Uh, proving grace is a very it's a very important thing for us. Now we want to keep drilling, going deep, and span lateral the deposit. Remember that we just went with the hole forty three and forty five to the west. Now we went with the hole forty six to the east, and we went with the forty four to the northeast uh, over the the high grade uh, core of the system, and all of Four holes ended in mineralization, so the system remained open, opens in all direction. So that tells you a lot about the size of the deposit itself. So right now, the you know Makoa deposit is roughly five billion pounds of copper, based upon the existing uh, you know resource. When you see the results of the drilling. 43, 44, 45, 46. What what sort of size potential does this give you like for expansion? Does this mean that maybe this deposit could be 6 billion pounds of copper or 7 billion pounds of copper? Yeah, we want to reach the 1 billion ton mark. We already have 636 million tons that in copper containers 2.1 million tons of copper and 500 million tons of molybdenum uh, which is is the second largest copper deposit in Colombia and is one of the largest uh, molybdenum resources in Colombia. So all the drilling, uh, the whole, the four holes 
and the normalization is tells you that the system was built over a time period at least of 10 million years so that's enough time for the the system grow in a in a way that could become a great porphyry over the Andes. So we are in the same Jurassic belt of different porphyries right down south of, of, of Mocoa, that is Mirador, Guarinza, San Carlos, Pananza. And thank God geology doesn't need political boundaries. Then you got Mocoa and, and, and it's, a, it's a system that tells you a lot about the upper printing alteration that we observe in the in the in the core, the vein evolution that we have, the vein density that we have, it tells you uh, within the, the geophysics that we run a couple of years ago uh, covering the whole property, it tells you that this could be a district scale system. So in the news release, actually the last two paragraphs of the news release, uh, it's it's very well said that the interpretation is now multi-phase porphyry system that was influenced by potentially more than one magmatic center with multiple magmatic hydrothermal pulses. So explain to that, to the viewer, what does it mean when the system was active for this many millions of years and there were multiple magmatic pulses? Yeah, when we got, you know, the, the good geology is in the details. When you see the core at Mokoa, I can tell you that different pulses is making the architecture of the system. And porphyry are, are just like my finger. They are different pulses all connected to one magma chamber, right? So one of the fingers is Mokoa. Mokoa has at least three different stages of magmatic pulses. That, that's what we call the early porphyries, the interminal porphyries and the late porphyries. But the story doesn't end like that. We have a brecciation stage that brings high-grade copper and molybdenum into the system. And we got three different breccias identified within the Mokoa porphyry system itself. So that tells you a lot about how during this fertile window that is 10 million years ago, and 10 million years is enough time for the system to grow in such a way that could be a, a, a much larger system and we are just you know seeing the tip of the iceberg so we want to keep pushing with the drilling we are mobilizing the second drill rig to the project that allowed us to do two things expansion and testing new areas very good um is there a super gene enrichment blanket there well we have identified like a a, a well-developed super gene enrichment in in, in Mokoa. we do have uh, sulfide oxidation in the very first 50 or, or, or 80 meters of the deposit that brings patchy chalcocyte over the system. And most of the high grade uh, in Mokoa is related to two different high grade cores. So, by the way, we have two different high grade, not only, we, we got two one related to the brecciation and one related to the porphyry, right? So, um, that stage of brecciation brings at least. 1% of copper equivalent into the system. So it's very important. And we have three different breaches in, in I Mokoa. see that. I see that. So looking at the section map, there are these pockets of 1% plus grade. And it's, there's several of them. There's three or four of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the screen with the whole pre six. We hit what could be the extension of the western of the eastern breccia. Uh, we want to put another hole just to make sure that the continuity is there. Uh, but the most drilled breccia is the central one, uh, which runs roughly south to north uh, for an extension of almost 600 meters and goes down in the vertical extension, uh, uh, roughly one kilometer down of the surface. So it's a, it's a very strong uh, brecciation stage. Okay, so hole 46 is a great result, expanding the footprint uh, to the east and that depth outside of the pit shell. So what's next? Uh, can you tell us about hole 47? Yeah, so the idea is to keep testing uh, the vertical continuity of the system and the lateral extension. Hole, 40, hole 47 is really right now uh, is 
tactical design to understand the distribution of copper and molybdenum grades within the high grade zone, right? So that's the hole 47. The hole 48 will be um, a step out, drilling to the east, because the east valley is one of the high priority targets for us. So hole 48 will be a step out roughly 300 meters to the east of the deposit, trying to make the expansion of the system in that direction. I see. And then one of the things that I really like about Copper Giant is the exploration potential. You know, I think this project was held by another company 15 years ago. They did some work, but they focused on the, the, the main core area of, you know, the porphyry deposit. And you guys have done some field work. You've done a lot of mapping. You've done IP. Tell us about some of the step out wildcat targets that you have there. Yeah, well, we have a, um, an integrated approach for this definition of a target. We use different type of layers. Let's say we have soil and rock geochemistry along the whole property. We have um, um, a geophysics service that's magnetics and radiometrics. Uh, we have the, the structural data collected directly on the field or, or from the core oriented core that we have right now while we're drilling. And we build it all together using a uh, leaf rock in a 3D model that allowed us to make that type of definition. So the targets or the ranking of the targets is mainly based on the uh, how many check boxes each target has. If you have multiple checking boxes, you go right to the top. And we are now working in different in nine different areas besides Bokoa. And we want to focus our efforts in three of in three of those nine this year, making you know this, they are drill tested uh, targets already. That will be the East Valley, which is right to the east of the resource area of Mokoa. We got the Neblina target that it sits over the north northeast um, trend of the uh, intermineral porphyry in Mokoa, so it sits right there in the same in the same trend, and we got Piedra Lisa, which is three kilometers down to the to the southeast of Mokoa, which has all the characteristics of, of being a, a, a blind porphyry. Very interesting. So porphyries have a tendency to occur in clusters along belts. Sure. We we know this is part of a major porphyry belt. Uh, is there potential for more porphyry centers? And maybe there is a cluster of porphyries here? Yeah, and, and let me, that's a great question. And let me back a little bit more about the jurisdiction of, of where Mokoa sits on it, right? Uh, Mokoa is part of the uh, Jurassic Belt. That belt extends from the south of Ecuador to the north of Colombia. In Ecuador, you got all the cluster that's Mirador, Guarinza, Panazza, San Carlo, and multiple other porphyries in, in early stages of exploration. Right to the north sits Mocoa, is the same address of, of those deposits in Ecuador. And when you take a look, a, a very detailed look of Mocoa, you got multiple pulses, three different pulses. You got 10 million years of a fertile window. That's enough time for the system to grow. You got three different breaches that's the brecciation system you got this beautiful um, geophysics response showing the d max zone of roughly five by five kilometers you got different targets nice different areas including the east valley neblina and and Pierre Alisa areas with all the characteristics to be another cluster porphyry it's very similar to what you see in marin in Guarinza, right you got the, the, the center of the deposit and, and different fingers uh, all clustering together. That's the characteristic of big system in, in, in a porphyry system itself. So we are very confident that Mokoa could be part of that cluster and Mokoa will be uh, one of the greatest porphyries in the Andes. You know, it's interesting because the Andes is known for the world's best porphyry deposits, incredible porphyry systems. Why do you think this one kind of has it? I mean, it was discovered, it was drilled by a major mining company, but it's relatively unexplored. You know, when you mm -hmm. consider the address, 
uh, you would think that, you know, Rio Tinto would have this project, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of different, uh, of different stories. I mean, Major's drill looking for gold and, and Mokoa is a moly and copper porphyry dominant. Um, it's quite different from the Miocene porphyries in Colombia, which is our gold rich porphyries. Uh, but Mokoa have these relevant characteristics and share so many things and, and so many uh, aspects of a, of a bigger system like, let's say, the Mirador or Guarinza, uh, which, by the way, they are Jurassic Port three as well, the same age as Mokoa. Uh, but it's the same recipe, the same geodynamics uh, recipe that is behind a, a, a monster deposit like Teniente and, and Chuki and, 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 and Spondida. I mean, we see over the Andes, eight of the 10 largest mine is right here in the Andes. So we are part of the one of the, the most underexplored and highly prospective area that's the, the Jurassic Belt uh, crossing from the south of Ecuador to the north of Colombia. And tell me about the, so I've actually been to the core shack that you're yeah. seeing I, I was there in uh, in 2022 and I met some of the locals I awesome. met some of the, the team there and I, I had dinner and uh, spent some time in the town. Tell us about this area and how does mining exploration you know, affect the area and how do the locals view Copper Giant? Okay, so we are uh, 10 kilometers to the north of the capital of the Putumayo department. That's to the south of Colombia, close to the border uh, with Ecuador. Um, we have a local support that is very important for us because it keeps things moving in an in, in efficient way. It is very important for us. We are dedicated almost two years in, in, in bringing that engagement with the community and being part of the project. We are building this project brick by brick together. This is not the Copper Giant project. This is the, co they feel part of it. And it's very important we create jobs we create local suppliers all our supplies came from putumayo or mokoa we build our boots here in the ground in mokoa all the uniforms that that are that my team uses they will build here locally so that that every single aspect it could be like a, a minor stuff but it's very important to create that engagement with the community we use rainwater for our processes in the drilling that allowed us to reduce our impact into the environment. So every single aspect is very important to keep moving forward this project step by step together with the community. How many people does the company employ uh, there in the area? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we are uh, roughly 75 people working in this project between managing base and here in Mokoa, which is the, the, the where the, all the action takes place, right? Okay, very good. And so I hear there's another drill rig arriving. What can you tell us about the second rig? Well, we are mobilizing the second drill to the project that allowed us to do two things that the first and the original drill will be focused on the high grade distribution within the, the, the porphyry of Mokoa. And the second drill will be focusing more on the other areas that will be East Valley, Piedra Lisa, and Neblina. Very good. Thank you, Edwin. This was a great conversation. I appreciate your time. It was a pleasure, Robert. Thank you.